Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Danae, and I'm here with a message for you. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. It's May 1st through, t <laughs> through 2024. And it's a wonderful day in my neighborhood anyway. Hope you are having a fantastic day. Night of Wands wanted to peek out, okay? Somebody's really excited about something. Hmm. Really, really excited. Like almost can't control it. Or can barely contain themselves excited. Maybe aroused. Here we go with that energy again. <laughs> Uh, depending on the object of the arousal, proceed with caution, have some, practice some wisdom, some decorum, some self-control, and practicality, if at all possible. But hell, sometimes it just bees like that. Life is just, I don't know, passion evoking sometimes. And shoot, some of those moments are quite rare. So when we get them, you know, when you get that burst of energy and you're like, yes, I'm so happy. I'm so excited about the day. What can I do? Where can I go? Or excited to go somewhere or do something maybe someone <laughs> you know sometimes we do hold on to that feeling for dear life because i guess it's fair because sometimes those moments are far and few between the mundane you know so enjoy yourself just be safe and you know be responsible period all right, eight of pentacles may be excited about some work or an opportunity. Is somebody's work making them, um, is, is it that enthusiastic? Are you that enthusiastic about your work? Maybe somebody can't wait to get to work today or couldn't wait to get to work today or can't wait to get started on some new idea that they've been enlightened to or they or there's a new drive and passion behind your work could be that yeah from what what maybe once was maybe you were waiting on yeah that that would maybe the the night of wands is like an aha moment and you were waiting on some enlightenment or maybe you didn't know you were waiting on it but it came and that that was the drive that said yes now i know what to do it's like a, a piece of the puzzle was missing now you have it and you know how to move forward and you want to move forward all day all night apparently you know like you could get lost in whatever this work is yeah, judgment. I like I like this. Some decisive energy. Maybe it was just that, you know, being um unsure about whether you should move forward or or not not just the how but whether or not you should and waiting on a sign or a signal of certainty. And you got it like a burst of lightning or like a, a a strike of lightning or a burst of energy. And now you're certain of how to proceed. I still feel, um, especially with the judgment card, I feel good energy on this, but because it was the Knight of Wands, not necessarily the Ace, I would say still be um, creatively responsible, you know, to, because the Judgment card 
calls into to play consideration for your actions, whether it be in the past or whether it be the projection of your present actions or decisions, right? With the Knight of Wands, sometimes that energy, as I said, can be a bit impulsive. You know, you get that bright idea and you just jump out the window, full speed ahead, no, no questions asked. <laughs> you know, all systems go. And as I said, sometimes it feels good to flex in that in that frequency because we don't often feel so confident to just go for it, whatever it is. Just consider the big picture, the the you know um, the integrity and the motivation behind your drive the crystallization of the enlightenment that you feel you've received, you know, making sure that that frequency of passion is pure, how it impacts your work and your efforts up until this point, but also how it has a long lasting or um, and it makes an impression beyond this present moment. I feel like there's a reason to say that. Yeah, here's a protecting your passion card, high standards, and strong and healthy boundaries is what I've been seeing with this card lately. So what could that mean practically? I think it, it really just doubles down on on um, exercise and responsible passion. Cause you you could get that spark, and it could detour you into some distraction. Quite honestly, away from, it's, it may seem productive because it's so intense, but if it's not in alignment with the purest nature of your purpose, your focus at this time, like pure inspiration, it could actually drive you away from the path of prosperity and productivity, even if it feels good in the moment. So honestly, that could look like, you know, a temptation on the path to do something that is immediately gratifying, but doesn't really yield long-term results or benefits. There's a result, but is it a benefit? That's the key. Mm. And that could be people, places, or things, honestly. Because the influence could be coming from associations. But, because here is that here, where it's like an influence like, yo, you want you want to spark up? <laughs> you know, when it's one energy, that's, the, that's my go-to when it comes to distractions or things that could be contrary, that could feel good in a moment, but could be contrary to where you want to be, you know, for the long haul. Or at least, I won't even say for the long haul, but I'll say for right now. What's, what is, where is, where is it that you need to be right now? Is it in the hangman position where you came from, which is what maybe sparking up might do, you know? It might even give you some inspiration in that still moment. I don't know, but what what are we saying here? I guess it, it kind of is considerate, considerate of the weighing the, the best, you know, the, the, the best case scenario. Because don't get me wrong, I've had some great inspiration on account of a, a, a session, okay? However, did I necessarily have the best 
action, you know, after that or or in light of that session, if you know, you know, not always. So it just, it's like, what's, what's really worth the trade-off? And it could work that way, like even, let's say, sexually, which I'm saying all these things because, as I said, it's the Knight of Wands. So it could be things that could be immediately gratifying or tantalizing, tempting, but don't necessarily have long-term benefits. So it could be a session in the sexual nature, you know, where it, it there's definitely a surge of energy there for sure. Sexual energy is powerful. But after the release, though, are you still happy with whom you release that energy with, you know, because that matters too. So it's just like, you know, you have to consider what you gain, but also what you could stand to lose when you take certain risks or, um, and I guess the, the Knight of Wands is a bit of a gamble. It's kind of like, you know, rolling the dice a bit because he could be here today and going tomorrow. So it's just like, how much stock do you place in things that have an immediate effect may have some impact on, on the, your long-term uh, sustainability, i.e. maybe you do get a bright idea or aha moment for your next ambition or your next work project or whatever, but does it also cloud your judgment in some type of way too? Like, is there a drawback? I don't know why I'm saying that, but here is the Seven of Wands, which is definitely about protecting your passion holistically, standing your ground on what you have already set as a standard, and um, kind of knowing your your own energy from the surrounding projections, again, from those influences that could be beautiful distractions in some regard, but something that you may not feel is favorable for or on account of later, maybe even much later. Um, and also, what is this? Uh, like I said, high standards and healthy boundaries. So it's also not putting yourself in places and in positions and in tempting spots where you might be influenced to do something that wouldn't necessarily hurt you, but wouldn't necessarily elevate you holistically either. It's, it's, it's really about gauging the highest frequency of discernment at this time. Like you're not, you're not playing small anymore. You're not, it's not just about, oh, I could just do this and I'll be fine. Like there's something more sensitive here I'm feeling about your energy that perhaps some of the things that w you would have, you know, it's kind of like how when you're young, you know, there are certain things you can do. Like say when I was in college that I could drink be up all night and bounce back up the next day, you know, providing I didn't get too crazy. You know what I mean? My recovery time was a bit different when I was younger. But now, I mean, I haven't really been drunk in a long time, to be honest with you. But there's even in my, my body, you know, there are certain things where like if I'm out all day and it's, I'm doing a lot of intense walking and moving around or like in, intensified um, physical activity, I'll go to sleep, I think I'm fine. The next day I'm like, oh shoot, my legs are sore. <laughs> you know, like, and that wasn't always the case, you know, but now that I'm older, my body has a different, has a slower recovery time 
than what it did when I was younger. So it's something about that here energetically that it translates energetically where the things that you may have been able to do, and it could be a matter of the time, maybe not even as far as age, but because of the spirit of the time that we're in, what was good for the goose, maybe even a couple months ago, a year ago, whatever, might have a different effect and maybe even a delayed recovery than it does now. The impact could be greater and therefore the recovery time could be more, more um, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, something about that. That's interesting. Hmm. Maybe because we're just operating in many of us, if not all of us, because the, the frequency in the realm has raised significantly, whether you recognize it or not. And maybe that's the point that it could have gone without notice just how delicate our energetic force fields are now. It could even be about like being out in large crowds. Like that's another thing, you know, which is why my social lifestyle has changed dramatically over the last few years. I used to be a social butterfly, always wanting to be out and about doing this, doing that, being with people, friends, meeting new people, strangers, you know, always wanting to be in connection. Not really, I mean, always knowing when to pull back too, because I never minded being alone, but really thriving with human connection, to be honest, and, and not being um, alarmed by it whatsoever, being, li being enlivened by it, at least so I thought. But nowadays, if I go out and I'm having a whole day of being in a public space or being around a whole bunch of different energies, you know, particularly that may not all necessarily be of the highest frequency, you know, respectfully. I almost absolutely need to decompress, not just when I get home, but most likely I'm not going to be too social or too exposed the next day either. You know, like that's kind of my bounce back and recover now that I'm thinking about it. You know, energetically, it makes a whole lot of sense, particularly with the Seven of Wands card. So, like I said, it could be a range of things from who you're engaged with, what you're doing, maybe activities that you're doing, your, um, your, your participating in habits that you pick up, put down, you know, new, old, whatever. Um, absolutely the people. If I didn't say that enough, it go, It definitely matters to say it again, to be mindful of your, um, your, your influences, the influences around you, but also the, what, what's the word that I just used? Um, your, oh, damn it, being, um, exposed, like your exposure to certain energies. Yeah, it's just the height, you're being called to a heightened level of discernment and judgment on that, even in the most primitive and practical sense. Like I said, it could be things that you just last week or the, or last month would do without thought. And then I guess you kind of got to really listen to your body and listen to um, the signs and signals in your force field as it would be with the hangman, like what you're being enlightened to pay attention to, because it could seem primitive, simple, no big deal, but it could actually have an effect on your productivity. So I know I just went all around the mulberry bush, but sometimes it has to kind of come through like that. But it's definitely, you know, must be very important to say that at this time, you have to treat yourself quite sacredly, unapologetically so. 
you know it's 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 just it's for your own conservatism and protection but also because that your well-being is connected to your purpose and if you're not in the best frequency of energy that you need to be in say even with that night you need to really be operating on the ace or at least the king of, of wands at this point in time but all you have to give to your work your mission your your um, purpose your passion is a night of wands energy maybe because you were partying last night or you smoked and maybe smoked a little too much or a little too long or too, one too many days and you lost enthusiasm, you lost that zest and zeal. Maybe being around folks that drain your energy, you know, that, but you love them. You, you know, like it could affect something that's far more detrimental um, than whatever it is you're willing to make that immediate sacrifice for. So I'll take that as it resonates. I know it was a lot for three, four cards, but it must mean something important right now. And it's probably particularly because we're coming out of Mercury retrograde. We're in the, the post-shadow phase. So there is certainly a, going to be a new impulse of enthusiasm to start pro new projects to m perhaps reconnect with folks or or merge new connections um to just kind of break out of the shell it's a beautiful day where i am it's 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 spring season there's a lot of newness in the air as it is with the full card to just kind of want to be footloose and fancy free you know just take leaps of faith and just put yourself out there without much inhibition. And that's cool under the best circumstances, but just be mindful that there are still elements, first of all, that your your energy is more, is, is more, um, uh, is, is delicate at this time. And there are other energies out there that are just as ambitious and eager to connect with you and your purest form for better or for worse that could make an impact deeper than what you have an expectation for or what you would you would consciously or I will say subconsciously brace yourself for so that seven of wands is about being proactive about your surroundings and your energetic force field, not being so casual and um, contemporary. <laughs> I don't know why that word came up, but you know, being a maybe being a little bit more more anal and super conscious than you typically would be even as you're getting ready or are in the process of beginning new journeys, starting new adventures, you know, enjoying yourself quite primitively, just really having a good time. Yeah, knowing when it's time to go home too, or when it's time to walk away from things that, that you know, like seems like a good time or used to be, used to be satisfying, but they just don't have that same flavor. Like, don't, don't stay too long in places that are not giving you what you need with people that are not giving you what you need or doing things that are not nurturing you in a positive way. Okay. Oh, wow. So we got Pentacles, and we got this. Hmm. Yeah, this is this is definitely. I, I'm hearing like something about exchanging your birthright for, or set like sacrificing your birthright for what though? What is that about? Is this supposed to be here? I think they're supposed to be here. Oh no, shit. I think it's this. Oh yeah, for your destiny. 
that's what that was. Or this is the exchange, you know, this heightened sensibility of your surroundings and your spiritual well-being is the exchange for trauma and it, it's it's you know it's a high rate of exchange but what we also know is that sometimes it's harder for us to release the things that we're we're familiar with and comfortable with to have something greater considering that sometimes the greater or better isn't always certain or it's not always like we're not we're not always a hundred percent sure of what that gets to look like which is why we hold on to the old and what feels familiar in the first place it's like when you at least know what to expect of that it's, you know there's a diff there's a settlement and security there than when it's it's like that picture with um jesus and the little girl it's like a cartoon like an illustration and the little girl is holding a small teddy bear and jesus is like holding his hand out to take the small teddy bear but she's kind of apprehensive to give it up because that's her comfort that's her little buddy you know that that's her her, her friend but behind jesus's back he's holding like this huge teddy bear, like one of those big went at a carnival type of teddy bears. And it's like, in exchange for this, like get all, all of the trauma, the heartache, the things that make you feel comfortable, blazing up when you wanna feel calm, sexing down when you, you know, you wanna feel energized or feel loved or feel needed or, you know, desired or whatever hanging around certain folks when you're feeling bored um, or, you know, when you're feeling lonely, uh, engaging in certain activities when you're feeling lost, you know, and you don't know what else to do with yourself. It's like the exchange for what comes, what seems at least natural at this point what just makes sense or, you know, is almost a default energy is nothing compared to what you can earn on account of elevating your expectation, you know, really looking to the highest return for your investment at this point in time. The will of fortune, that's like energy that is this was was stored up and stocked up for you to have on a universal like a of a celestial magnitude not this little earthly stuff that we hold on to because you know it's what we can it's what's tangible it's what's um most present in our perspective if, if i'm making sense it's like you know this you know drama you know toxicity you know trauma it may not always feel good just like getting drunk and then being hung over the next day doesn't feel good but you know it takes the edge off in in the process you know you don't feel that way when you're actually throwing them back it's the aftermath you know but now it's time to really like elevate your senses to, it's like almost um, like advancing your, your palate to some degree, you know, like your, um, like your, something about your taste buds being advanced, you know, elevating your taste for a different type of satisfaction. You know, like, I don't know how to say that better. Three of Swords, Ace of Pencils. Let's get another one, but Will of Fortune is important here. Because it's like you can, there's a whole lot of something available for you to have. And perhaps you're already 
in the process of manifesting that. I'm sure you are, if this message resonates. So I feel like it's not even a matter of if you don't do this, you won't get that. I feel like at this point, it's just really being considerate of protecting whatever this is because it's already beginning to materialize. Um, and it's so highly destined that it's like you wouldn't want to sacrifice it's like the little girl with Jesus, if she knew that holding on to that teddy bear could jeopardize her having that big stuffed animal, that big one, if she could see that, she would easily give it up, you know, because the exchange is evident. It makes sense. But there's a lot of stuff that we may not be able to see that's being crystallized at this time. So to hold on to anything that is not in the spirit of that eight of cups, that is not holistically satisfying could tarnish or taint the reception or even the, um, the, the value of that big teddy bear. You know, it's like you, she wouldn't even have room to hold the big teddy bear still holding on to the little one in that in that depiction and there's some things that maybe don't there's no space for anymore because what you have coming in is so much bigger and such a greater magnitude that it needs room it, it needs to take up space it needs room and you may need room to carry it mm. it could be a gift now that I'm looking at this Ace of Pentacles. Like you may have been searching for an enlightenment or praying it in, calling it in, in some practical aspect by way of inspiration on some project, some job, some, um, you know, business endeavor, or way to make money, something tangible. The thing about the Ace of Pentacles is that it, does materialize tangibly, but it's, it's, its nature is spiritual. So this could be something, maybe a gift, a talent, um, an ability, some type of supernatural trait that is about to take up room in your life and either will push out all of many of the things that perhaps some of which you wouldn't mind to see go, but some that may still be a bit hard to release, maybe people, places, and things. But the point is, is there may not be room for both. Again, this is not a threat that if you don't let this go, you don't get that because I don't really like projecting energy like that. But it definitely speaks to the fact that what you have coming in or manifesting is far more sustainable, advancing, productive, and empowering than anything you could feel that you are beholden to, especially when you've already kind of had the evidence that it's really not all that, um, it's, it's really not that much of a benefit. It doesn't yield as much a great benefit to you. By way of coins, this could be even speaking about holding on to a job, an actual job, because of the practicality, security, stability, all that good stuff. But it could um, forge a point of judgment and decision between something more of a spiritual essence or more purposeful driven that you don't necessarily have the evidence of the practicality for, for a return um, and security now but 
there in some instances you may not have the luxury of waiting to find out perhaps it could be that you don't have the time and energy to manifest this wholly and completely to the to the point of where it allows you to be comfortable and secure in it unless you give up that position or that job that you don't necessarily feel that satisfaction from you know so that's probably why and here's a new beginning right here yeah, so it, it can show up in a lot of different ways. It can show up, but obviously there's some point of decision here and discernment that is pivotal for your long-term success and satisfaction. Because you could be successful on the job you're at now or doing what you're doing now and the relationship that you're in now could be fine enough. You know, living where you are now could be cool until you realize what the other possibilities are. And for many of us, we don't, as I said before, it's like you don't really know until you know. So perhaps the leap of faith, you know, is the call to action at this time in the spirit of that Knight of Wands to just kind of do it and see what happens. There is room for that ambition sometimes. It definitely comes with its risks and rewards because as I said, it's a gamble. <laughs> but sometimes, look, this is jackpot energy and this certainly is with the Wheel of Fortune doubling down on a jackpot. So I guess it's just how lucky are you feeling right now? Wow, okay, pretty damn lucky <laughs> and practical at the same time with the with the Queen of Pentacles. So it's really, it's really grounding what I'm saying that it may seem like a big risk, but in your heart of hearts, like you're already knowing it's, it's the, it's the, the perception of it as a risk that may be cause for a pause because perhaps, like I said, it draws you out of the comfort zone, out of the practicality, even out of the mundane, perhaps even the toxic that you've grown comfortable in. But all signs and signals are pointing to that this is something that may seem like a big leap of faith and a, um, a gamble. But, and it really is like, kind of ready made for you the leap of faith the the chance um opportunity is just the segue to something that could be quite stabilizing and quite practical especially in the long run because the queen of pentacles you know is is all of that she's definitely practical she's definitely prosperous um dependable, reliable. She's not jumping out the window making rash decisions about her finances, but she also knows when to invest, which in itself is a risk, you know, always, no matter what you're investing into, even yourself. And maybe that's the point here, to really take the gamble on yourself, to bet on yourself, because clearly, you know, as high as the stakes may seem, the odds are pretty good is what it's looking like to me. Wow, something transformative here with the death card. And, I, and, and as I was turning that over, I was looking at this three of swords. It's like the end of this cycle of feeling like, you know, the odds are against you because that's the evidence that you have. There hasn't been a lot of evidence for betting on, you know, the bet on red, for instance, as they always say bet on black, right? I don't really know. It just sounds right. <laughs> but, um, you know, you, you've taken some, some high risks and they haven't always, they haven't always panned out for the win. So having that muscle memory and your energetic force field doesn't necessarily encourage you 
to give up that little teddy bear when you can't see what else is going to be comforting or what else is going to be grounding and stabilizing for your future. But little do you know, it's like Jesus got a whole jackpot <laughs> waiting in the wings for you to bring you to exactly the place of stabilization, security, stability, um, independence that you were going for, even in the ways that you were pursuing it that may or may not have yielded that. You know, it's like you've taken greater risk before for lesser odds, you know, for worse odds. It's like you might as well take one more for the team on something that is almost a guaranteed win is what I'm sensing. Like literally change your life type of chance. Mm. Chance of a lifetime. Wow. Empress. A tower. It's shocking. I, I think this this tower i think it it's twofold because it definitely has the energy of kind of being thrown out of the tower when you're sticking around too long like when the universe needs you to shift and you're being resistant or obstinate or stubborn or fearful that sometimes circumstances come to kind of move you um on the right path or put you on the right trajectory but sometimes the tower literally can just be that level of intense change that you could have never seen coming you could have never prepared for and it's not always bad it's just a matter of adjustment so imagine you just going about your everyday humdrum life you get a windfall that puts you in the queen of pentacles in a mastery position of your um, your material gain and wealth. And that seed itself leads you to be the, the, you know, like planting that seed and to back into perhaps that business, uh, personal business vision or ambition or goal, or like I said, even into you puts you in an energetic position of power as the queen, as the empress, like damn near overnight is what this energy is given. Imagine going from managing your finances pretty well, pretty responsibly, doing okay, not not definitely not needing or wanting for anything, particularly not needing for anything. Of course, we always want something, but you know, for the most part, you're pretty well secure to go being in a position like that in an instance where whatever you desire is at your command. That's a huge adjustment. It's a shock to the senses, shock to your reality, shock to your surroundings, back to that seven of wands energy of, of being protective because who you were yesterday may not be who you are today. And who you are today may not be who you are tomorrow, but it doesn't mean your surroundings have changed, your connections have changed. So it could literally be somebody about with, with will of fortune. It could be, the heartbreak could be the reality of having to really peel yourself away from certain, like I said, certain comforts, comfort zones, comfort connections, comfort um, ideas about yourself, about life, you know, even thinking that you can move around a certain type of way back to me when I said, like, I just can't be as exposed as I used to be before. That might be somebody's actual reality <laughs> sooner than you think or in a, in a greater magnitude than you ever could have imagined, where because of some heightened level of wealth or affluence or exposure, recognition, you know, something here it could be changing so drastically that where you used to be able to just go out to the store and not have a care in the world, maybe you need security now. Maybe you need, um, you can only go a certain time of day or a certain time of week or Maybe you can't go at all for some people. I don't know, but there's some drastic change to life as you've known it that 
I think it's mostly sweet, it seems to me, but as I said, the bitterness sometimes, no, regardless of, of what may be impending on the horizon still, even as that baby girl with the teddy bear could be in the letting go of what you're used to, even if that means letting go of who you used to be because you ain't that no more, or you're not about to be. Something is changing and it's gonna rock your world, knock your socks off. Um, and as I said, I really feel like it's a good thing with the Empress here up under the Fool and the Ace of Pentacles, it's gotta be good stuff, but the change may be so sudden and drastic that it, it could be a challenge to adjust to. This was a slow, wow, this was a slow warm up, but for some reason it's like, I don't know, like I don't know why it's, it felt like it took a long time for me to really get into the core of this message for some reason. Perhaps because it's that delicate, um, maybe perhaps because some, some energies don't want it to be revealed, but it also could be to the point of protecting your energy, that whatever this change gets to be, be um, be cautious. I haven't seen the high priestess yet, but be cautious about how you express it and um, exhibit it. Now, when you going from the Queen of Pentacles to the Empress in any capacity, it may be virtually impossible for that change not to be noticeable, which is why there may be some added layer of security necessary in some way, shape or form. Maybe not in the most like actual practical ways, like actually bodyguard type of energy, but maybe so. I don't know your life, you know? But definitely, like I said, a different projection and proaction about your protection. However, as much as you can be conservative, because that's what the Queen of Pentacles is as well, as conservative as you can be about this transition for the sake of your own security, I would suggest that you be so for the protection of your legacy, your family, the longevity of your experience, your peace, your happiness, like protecting all of that, your entire force field for, for a shift and an advancement such as this, it can't, it, you may not necessarily be able to just flaunt it, you know, all over social media or maybe not even be able to go in certain places with certain things and it, you know, with certain material um, ex exhibitions, like with that new fancy car, with that, you know, with all your designer clothes and that uh, diamond chain. And, you know, it's like you just, unfortunately, ever, we're not all living in the same frequency, you know, so you have to be careful once upon a time when maybe you didn't have anything too fancy to care about, you could have blended in with the masses to some degree. But it seems like now there's a different glow about you that could be, um, it could be uh, provoking to obstinate energies one way or another again whether it be a real live and in action in your surroundings whether it be just in your intimate settings between um people family friends foes whatever like seeing you differently in your advancement and we know that jealousy and envy is not lost even in those intimate um, connections for sure that's where you experience it first unfortunately because people see where you came from and where you end up but then even socially you know how you expose yourself to strangers it may not be 
where you could have posted at your every accomplishment and everything new that you copped and your your last haul at uh you know whatever you know at Zara or wherever the hell you know you just bought a whole bunch of stuff you know it's like unfortunately at least for a time through perhaps maybe the transition of this shift you may want to be cautious and careful about how you exhibit it or not i'm not telling you you can't share at all um or you should go into hiding or into hermit that's not my projection to make but it definitely will cause for if it's what i'm feeling it will cause for a change yeah exactly here like the have and the have nots it's like you may even have a desire to want to share the wealth in an exuberant way go buy the bar out go you know pay for everybody's tab at at some restaurant or whatever or go um i just saw two cardinals flying by wow that's a sign <laughs> you may want to go um you know, out to the mall and you walking around with hella bags, but you don't know the perpetrators are watching you, you know, just scouting who they could hem up on the way to the car. You know, it's like, unfortunately, right now, the world, the pendulum is shifting and I feel like it's going to balance out with some time. But right now, that energy between sanity and insanity is at a stark <laughs> is a stark difference you know some people are operating with the best of intentions just living their best life and some people are really at their lowest point you know energetically if nothing else so you have to kind of make concession for that frequency all around not that you never had to but i just feel like there's an intensity here because there's there's such a polarity um, that's so evident in, in, in those two realities right now that, as I said, to someone that doesn't have the mind to be diabolical, you could be an inspiration. But to someone that's in despair or distress or feeling down and out and don't have nothing to lose, you could be the perfect mark. You could literally provoke the demons in someone to you know, victimize you in a way that could be avoided, you know, and that, and that's not limited to material. It could be energetic. Like I said, even with sharing certain things on social media, wanting to share your latest idea or preview something that you're about to roll out. Just don't until it's ready to go. Don't do it. Conserve your energy all around, all across the board until it's secure and sound enough to be in, in sacred enough that it can't be attacked, you know, or at least that you've done all that you can to avoid that, that instance. Sorry to say, but it just is what it is. But 10 of, ten of cups, of whatever it is, is going to be quite fulfilling, quite happy, is building legacy in a very uh, sustainable way with the cup energy, not just pentacles. We're talking about cups. So this is the energy of love that's being passed down, that frequency that's being regenerated. That's that's impenetrable. It's eternal. It's indestructible. It does. It's recession proof. It's um, quarantine proof. When you're in a vibration such as this. There's nothing that can really diminish that or devalue it. And then you're the empress that's that's birthing that level of vitality. Oh yeah, like this is this is good shit. Whatever it is, it's good. And I will give me a good card to end spirit. Don't play with me. <laughs> exactly. The nine of did I did I do that right? Let me see what's underneath. Yeah, I did. The Nine of, of Cups, Wish Fulfillment, at its finest. So that means individually you are fulfilled and within your connections, your family life, your establishments, there is fulfillment. So it's like a projection off of you. 
That's amazing. So there's two of, of, of swords here. I'm gonna see what the bottom card is, but or the top card, I should say. But um, these days, to me, is given just being blind to the BS and not allowing anything in your energetic force field, which makes sense from how I started this, that would obstruct this or threaten this vitality, because this is like supreme energy right here to possess or to have access <clears throat> to or potential of. You wouldn't want to engage in activities or in places or peop with people or things that would put this at risk. You at your most supreme sense of creativity and um, fertility, the magnificent things you give birth to and the legacy that you're building to leave behind in the, in the Ten of Cups and then being fulfilled like holistically from the depths of your soul and what it is that you're doing in the Nine, like that's a that's that's premium passion right here that you would not want to take lightly. I'm talking top flight security to protect this vitality, even if it's just from the inside out. Again, not allowing yourself to engage in even certain toxic thoughts and ideas and behaviors that would damper this vibe. You wouldn't want to do it. So it's, I think, well, let me see what's on the bottom. Man, I know that's right. Chariot card. Yeah, anything that's not about forward movement, success. Ooh, and this is also about willpower too. So yeah, like anything that challenges that you in the highest frequency of your decision making, your discernment, your will, your strength, your self-control, your balance, your temperance, it's a no. That's what this block is for. It don't matter who it is, what it is, how long you've known it, how long it's been around, how good it feels. It, is it worth this? Is, is it worth it literally like well, just look at these two here is this worth that that's the question at hand so that that's that's for you to answer on your own regard in your own on your own accord but if you're serious about moving forward into a future oh you know what I said something about a car. Oh, I heard that. It's funny because I was I, I thought to share it as a download because it was so random. Right before I pushed record, I heard a brand new car. Like how, <laughs> oh, when the Wheel of Fortune came. Oh, that's Wheel of Fortune. That's how the guy on um, The Price is Right used to say the prizes. Tell me what they want, Fred. A brand new car. I heard that in my head and I laughed like I giggled like, oh, that's so random, but hell, I take it. And I thought to share it as just a random download because maybe somebody is about to get a brand new car or there's just about to be, again, some type of windfall of advancement here that you didn't see coming. And the chariot, of course, we know is representative of a car vehicle moving ahead moving forward but whether it's an actual brand new car or not your chariot awaits to take you to that next level of advancement and it's like anything that is not fuel for that journey is it's got to be left behind It's a relic of the past at this time. Can it be reconciled later? Maybe, I don't know, possibly, but we're talking about forward movement in the present tense right now, which is all that really matters because if you don't solidify that inertia, 
I don't even know if that's the right word, but if you if you don't if you don't um <laughs> that's weird, I'm gonna look that up. If you don't um build that momentum now or or allow it to be obstructive or protect it from being obstructive, it could be the detriment to you, all those that you could all those people, places, and things that could be left behind that will never be reconciled if you don't continue, if you don't advance, and for those that have yet to be reconciled for the future. That Ten of Cups, that's the that's the um, focus at this time, the legacy that you're building out of love, out of satisfaction, out of fulfillment, not out of pity, not out of comfort, nostalgia or obligation. That energy is not going anywhere fast. It's definitely not going forward. If, if anything, it'll be stuck right in the same position that it's in as you will be at the hangman position. So don't be apologetic about what you have to dismiss or even be, um, this can also sometimes be indifferent, which you may even need to be indifferent to in order for the greater good of all to be served. It begins with you, you know? If you, if you don't take that initiative and that responsibility, it may never get done for anybody. That's just the point of it all. So... Congratulations. This was a slow burn, but I hope you under, you uh, connect with what I feel is uh, the ultimate message here, which is really such the great potential that you're embarking upon, that you're embodying, and that's crystallizing in true form right now as I speak. You know, that there's so much that you have to be... Um, excited about, you know, that you really do have a lot to be excited about and you also have a great deal to protect. All right, so best wishes to you. Godspeed in all that you do. Thank you for listening and watching. Until next time, as always, I leave you with peace.